Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture number 32 on measure and integration. In the previous uh, few lectures, we have been looking at the Lebesgue measure on uh, the space R 2 and its various properties. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had started analyzing how does the Lebesgue measure of a set change when we apply a linear transformation to it. So, we had uh, started analyzing it. Uh, let us recall uh, what we had done and then we will continue analyzing. Uh, this problem and some more properties of Lebesgue measure under other transformations. So, let us just recall what we had done last time was that we started looking at the theorem namely, if t is a linear transformation from R 2 to R 2 such that and E is a Lebesgue measurable subset, then we uh, showed that uh, we wanted to show that the transform set T of E the image of uh, E under T is again a Lebesgue measurable set and the Lebesgue measure of uh, the transform set uh, is obtained by multiplying the Lebesgue measure of the original set with uh, the constant called determinant of E. So, Lebesgue measure of T of E is equal to determinant of T times Lebesgue measure of the original set E. So, this property, this theorem we had started analyzing we had analyzed the proof of this theorem in the first case when t is a, a singular transformation. And there we argued that if t is a singular transformation, uh, then t of E the image set is going to be a Lebesgue null set and for a singular transformation determinant of E t is also equal to 0. That is how uh, singular transformations are characterized. So, in that case both the terms the Lebesgue measure of the translated set is equal to 0 is same as determinant of t times the Lebesgue measure of uh, the original set. Uh, in the case when t is a, uh, a non singular transformation, when t is non singular, so non singular means t is invertible and uh, uh, here are a few facts about uh, linear algebra saying that t is uh, non singular is same as saying its determinant is not equal to 0 and it is equivalent to saying that as a map t is a 1 to 1 on to map and the inverse of course, is also a, a linear transformation. So, in analyzing the proof of that, uh, we had already shown that if uh, um, E is a uh, Borel set. So, we first restrict ourselves to Borel subsets of uh, R 2. We showed that if E is a Borel set, uh, then for every non singular linear transformation T of E, uh, T the transform set T of E also is a Borel set that basically follows from the fact that every linear transformation uh, is a continuous map and if it is non singular, then the inverse also is a continuous map. So, uh, essentially saying that for every Borel set E, T of E is Borel, now one analyzes that uh, when E is open set, T of E is an open set and hence it is a Borel set and uh, then one shows that the collection of all sets for which this property is true, namely um, the image is a Borel set is a sigma algebra including open sets and hence uh, one concludes that uh, for every set E, the transform set, the image set T of E is also a Borel set. And we uh, also analyze that uh, this, uh, if you consider this as a measure uh, for all Borel sets, then it is uh, uh, translation invariant because T is linear and that means by the uniqueness property we got that for every linear transformation T, which is non singular, uh, the Lebesgue measure of the transform set namely T of E must be a constant multiple uh, of uh, the original measure lambda or R 2 of E and that constant will depend on uh, the transformation T. So, this is a stage we had reached and then we wanted to uh, analyze further and the claim we want to prove is that this C of T is nothing but determinant of so, this is the stage we had reached. So, let us continue the proof. Uh, let us observe that 
this map T to C of T, see for every T is transformation T, we are associating a number C of T which is uh, non negative. So, uh, we get a map T going to uh, C of T. So, this is a map for every non singular transformation T, we are associating a number C of T. This uh, uh, association, this map has the following properties namely, if T is a diagonal transformation, then we observed uh, that is that was the beginning of our uh, uh, analysis of this uh, theorem that that C of T is nothing but the determinant of T. So, for diagonal transformations C of T is equal to determinant of T uh, de 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 determinant and the second property is that if, uh, if, uh, if the linear transformation is a orthogonal transformation, then uh, this uh, uh, C of O is equal to 1 is equal to determinant of T and this is because of the fact that a orthogonal transformation on R 2 leaves the set uh, namely um, the uh, unit circle you can think of it as all x in R 2 such that uh, norm of x is less than or equal to 1 invariant. So, let us uh, just look at uh, this property a slightly more some of you may not be knowing about linear transformations. So, T is a linear transformation from R 2 to R 2 and let us uh, uh, as for every linear transformation is given by a matrix A. So, which is a 2 by 2 matrix. So, it is A, B, C and D. So, saying that T is orthogonal is same as saying that if you take A and look at it is a transpose that is same as A transpose A and that is equal to identity. So, saying that T is orthogonal is characterized by uh, this property about the matrices uh, matrix of the linear transformation namely A times A transpose is same as A transpose times A and that is equal to identity and which is also um, equivalent to the property that if you look at the row vectors and the column vectors. So, the row vector is A B and C D. So, these two vectors are orthogonal uh, are orthogonal namely the dot product uh, uh, is equal to 0 and each is a uh, unit vector. So, that is uh, uh, called orthogonal, but we are not even going to use this property. So, let us look at this property which says A A transpose is equal to A transpose A. So, this property gives us the following fact namely let us look at the dot product. So, let us take any vector x belonging to R 2 and look at the dot product of. Uh, so, let us look at the image, the image is T of x. So, x goes to T of x. Okay. So, let us look at the, uh, uh, the dot product. So, norm of T x square that is given by the dot product of T x with itself. So, that is the uh, uh, definition of the uh, magnitude the dot product okay, uh, in R 2, but this dot product can also be written as T times uh, this T can be written as T transpose uh, T of x. So, T transpose is the same as A transpose basically. So, you can think it as matrices okay. and that being identity. So, this is the same as x comma x. So, orthogonal transformations are also characterized by the property that the norm of the image of any vector is equal to norm of the original vector. So, that is another way of characterizing uh, orthogonal transformations. We can take that as a definition of the uh, transformation if you like. Now, from uh, both these properties that A transpose A is equal to identity. So, that implies the following fact that A transpose a equal to identity, this implies that the determinant of A transpose determinant of A is equal to 1 and that implies determinant of A transpose is same as determinant of A. So, that says determinant of um, A uh, uh, determinant of A times determinant of A. So, this square is equal to 1. So, that implies that the absolute value of determinant of A 
is equal to 1. So, for a so T orthogonal implies that determinant of T absolute value is equal to 1. So, that is one fact. Also, the fact that norm of T x is equal to norm of x implies that if norm of x is less than or equal to 1. So, that implies norm of T x is also less than or equal to 1. So, that means, if in the plane we look at the unit circle. So, this is the, the set where norm of x is less than or equal to 1 and if you take the transform set, the transform set is same. So, that so under T this goes back to the same thing. So, so norm of um, T x equal to norm x less than or equal to 1. So, that is saying that uh, T leaves uh, if T is orthogonal then it leaves the unit circle the region inside the unit circle invariant and that means that essentially means that the Lebesgue measure of this set is same as the Lebesgue measure of that set. Uh, so, that implies that the Lebesgue measure of the transform set. So, uh, that circle. So, mod x less than or equal to 1 is same as the Lebesgue measure of mod x uh, uh, less than or equal to 1 and this being equal to determinant of t this is being determinant of t uh, times uh, this being uh, uh, this is same as that. So, this is uh, sorry this is uh, same as uh, uh, so that implies that, but this can be written as determinant of t because that is equal to 1 times Lebesgue measure of uh, um, norm x less than or equal to 1. So, this implies this, so this is a constant right. So, c of t which is determinant of uh, t is equal to. So, c of t is 1 which is same as determinant of t. So, that means, for orthogonal transformations. So, t orthogonal implies c of t is equal to 1. So, that is the second fact uh, uh, that we wanted to uh, prove namely if, if O is a orthogonal tra transformation then the C of O the constant uh, this is a typo here this should have been a determinant of O uh, is because uh, the unit uh, circle region inside unit circle is left invariant uh, by uh, the orthogonal transformation. So, now and the next property uh, we want to uh, analyze is that for all non singular transformations T 1 and T 2 C of T 1 T 2 is equal to C of T 1 times C of T 2. That means, this map uh, is multiplicative. The map T going to C of T is a multiplicative map. Namely, if I look two transformations T 1 and T 2, then C of T 1 T 2 is same as C of T 1 times C of T 2. So, let us look at a proof of that. So, T 1 and T 2 are transformations from R 2 to R 2. Right. So, so we are going to look at. So, let us write T is equal to T 1 T 2. Then we to compute C of T 2. So, we are going to look at the measure mu of T T which is equal to. So, let us take any set. So, so let E be any set which is a Borel set. So, let us look at uh, lambda of lambda r 2 of t 1 t 2 applied to E. So, let us look at this. This by definition of the constant c of t is c of t 1 t 2 because t 1 t 2 is a linear transformation applied. So, this composite t 1 t 2 is applied to E. So, by definition of c of t 1 t 2 that should be equal to c t 1 t 2 of the Lebesgue measure of the set E. On the other hand, we can also think of this as lambda uh, Lebesgue measure of R 2 of 
T 1 applied to T 2 of E. So, this composition T 1 T 2 uh, is same as saying the linear transformation T 1 is applied to uh, the set T 2 of E, but if you do that then we know that this is equal to lambda r 2 of uh, it is lambda r 2 of T 1 of a set. So, it is C T 1. So, this is equal to C T 1 times lambda r 2 of uh, T 2 of E. And now, that once again uh, lambda r 2 of C of T 2 of E uh, gives you C T 2 and the original is C T 1 into lambda r 2 of E. So, we get that C of T 1 T 2 times the Lebesgue measure of any set E is same as is same as C T 2 into C T 1 of Lebesgue measure of E. So, this happens for every uh, set E. So, that implies, so this implies that C of T 1 composite T 2 is same as C of T 1 times C of T 2. So, this map uh, is a multiplicative map. So, this is the property we wanted to prove and now we need another fact from uh, linear algebra namely what is called a singular value decomposition for linear transformations. So, in case we have not come across this uh, um, theorem called singular value decomposition for linear transformations, uh, please look into the textbook that we have suggested namely uh, an introduction to measure and integration uh, and look at the appendix. Uh, of that book, you will find a proof of this single value, uh, singular value decomposition for linear transformations. So, let us state what is a singular value decomposition. It says that every linear transformation T can be represented as a product of three transformations, where the first one P and the last one Q are both orthogonal transformations, P and Q are orthogonal transformations and this d is a diagonal transformation. So, every linear transformation t can be represented as p times d times q, where p and q are some orthogonal transformations and d is some uh, diagonal transformation. So, this is uh, uh, a theorem called the singular value decomposition in linear algebra. So, uh, please uh, have a look at a proof of this in case you have not come across this theorem in the textbook uh, mentioned. So, once we know that for every linear transformation T can be represented as P times D times Q. So, and the property 3 just now stated says that uh, the constant C of any composite is the product. So, we apply that uh, property to this. So, we get C of T will be equal to C of P times D times Q, which uh, is nothing but the product. So, the C of a transformation T will be C of P into C of D into C of Q. So, we get that the constant for any linear transformation T is equal to the constant for some uh, orthogonal transformation P times the constant for uh, a diagonal transformation D and the constant for uh, another orthogonal transformation Q. But just now we observed that for orthogonal transformations the C of uh, orthogonal transformation the constant associated is 1. So, C of P is 1 and C of Q is 1. So, that gives you C of T is equal to C of D because both first and the last multiplicative things are 1. So, it is C of D and for a diagonal transformation we have already shown this is equal to determinant of uh, D. So, for the linear transformation T the constant C of T is equal to determinant of D, where D is the uh, diagonal tra transformation which appears in the sing singular value decomposition T is equal to P D Q. But on the other hand, we can also look at the determinant of uh, uh, T from this. So, determinant of T, recall that determinant is also a multiplicative map. So, determinant of T will be equal to determinant of P into determinant of D into determinant of Q, but determinant of P and determinant of Q both are equal to 1. So, that saves determinant of T is equal to determinant of uh, D. Okay. 
and just now we said determinant of uh, d uh, is equal to c of t. So, combining these two we get determinant of t is equal to determinant of d. Uh, so, uh, sorry uh, we get um, determinant of, uh, so this should be c of t is determinant of d. Okay. So, uh, so that that says that c of t should be equal to determinant of d. So, here it should be uh, this is redundant. So, c of t is determinant of d and determinant of d is equal to determinant of t. So, this two combined together gives you c of t is equal to determinant of t. So, that completes the proof of uh, the fact that for a linear transformation. So, we have completed the proof that the for a linear transformation, uh, if you take the set E and change it, transform it by a linear transformation that is same as uh, uh, determinant of T times the Lebesgue measure of uh, uh, E. So, the Lebesgue measure of the transform set is determinant of T times the Lebesgue measure of the set E. So, that proves uh, the theorem uh, for all sets which are Borel measurable sets. So, till now we have proved the theorem only for uh, Borel measurable sets. We would like to extend this theorem for Lebesgue measurable sets. So, for that let us observe uh, the following. How are the um, uh, Lebesgue measurable sets in R 2 obtained from uh, Lebesgue uh, from Borel measurable sets? What is the relation between Lebesgue measurable sets and the Borel measurable sets? So, the first property is that uh, if uh, let us take any set n which is uh, uh, in R 2 and says that its Lebesgue outer measure is 0. So, look at sets of uh, Lebesgue outer measure 0 in the plane. So, we first claim that under any linear transformation T the image is also a Lebesgue measurable set of uh, measure 0. That means, linear transformations take uh, sets of measure 0 to sets of measure 0 in plane. So, to prove that let us observe the following thing. So, let us take uh, n a subset of R 2 and Lebesgue measure of n equal to 0, but saying Lebesgue measure of uh, n is equal to 0 is same as saying for every epsilon bigger than 0 there exist rectangles, there exist rectangles uh, say r i i bigger than or equal to 1 such that the set n is contained in the union of these rectangles r i and the Lebesgue measure of the rectangle r i added together is less than epsilon. So, saying a set is a null set is same as saying it can be covered by rectangles uh, such that the total uh, measure of the rectangles put together is less than epsilon. But note now, so each r i is a rectangle, so it is a Borel set, is a Borel subset of R 2. Okay. So, that implies the T of r i also is a Borel subset of R 2 for uh, a non, non singular linear transformation uh, T, if T is non singular and the Lebesgue measure of T of R i by what we have proved just now is equal to determinant of T times Lebesgue measure of uh, Lebesgue measure of uh, R i. Right? So, that is just now what we proved for Borel sets this property holds. So, now the fact that n is covered by union of r i s is implies. So, this fact star implies that T of n is covered by union of T of r i i equal to 1 to infinity. Okay. So, this is contained by uh, T of r i. So, that implies by the countable subadditive property of the Lebesgue measure outer Lebesgue measure R 2 of T n is less than or equal to 
summation i equal to 1 to infinity Lebesgue outer measure of T of R i. And Lebesgue measure of T of R i is determinant. So, this is equal to determinant of T absolute value times summation of i equal to 1 to infinity Lebesgue measure of uh, R i. And that is less than epsilon. So, it is less than uh, uh, or equal to absolute value of determinant of T times epsilon. And since this property holds, so this holds for every epsilon bigger than 0. So, let epsilon go to 0. So, that will imply Lebesgue measure of outer measure of uh, T of n is equal to 0, when T is if T is non singular. And for a singular transformation, we know T of R 2 itself is uh, 0. So, T of n will be 0. So, this proves the fact that for every uh, uh, set n which is of Lebesgue outer measure 0, lambda uh, the image T of n under any linear transformation is again a set of measure 0. And the second fact um, between Lebesgue measure and uh, uh, Lebesgue measure and uh, Lebesgue measurable sets and the Borel measurable sets is the following. Every Lebesgue measurable set E can be represented as a union of two sets, one a Borel set A and an L set N and the Lebesgue measure of E is same as the Lebesgue measure of the set A, uh, N is a set of measure 0. So, that is the second fact one, uh, one has. So, let us take, so let, let A be a Lebesgue measurable, uh, let us uh, take Lebesgue measurable set in R 2, then this set A can be written as E union N, where E is a Borel set in R 2 and the Lebesgue measure. So, lambda, lambda R 2 of A is same as lambda R 2 of E. Now, if we look at T of A, so if we look at the set T of A, then that will be equal to T of E union T of uh, um, T of N, if T is say non singular. And now, this is a Borel set and this is again an L set. So, Lebesgue outer measure of T of A is equal to Lebesgue outer measure of T of E, which is equal to determinant of, because this is a Borel set. So, determinant of T times Lebesgue uh, outer measure, uh, Lebesgue measure of uh, the set E and which is same as the Lebesgue measure of the set A. So, this is same as Lebesgue measure of T times Lebesgue measure of A. So, we have used uh, the fact that if A is a Lebesgue measurable set, then A can be written as E union N, where E is a Borel set and N is a null set that means, the Lebesgue measure of R 2 of the set A is same as the Borel uh, Lebesgue measure of the Borel component of it that is R 2 of E. So, now, if I apply transformation T to it and say T is non singular, then T of A uh, will be equal to T of E union T of N and just now we observed that T of N is a null set and uh, T of E is a Borel set. So, Lebesgue measure of uh, T of A will be nothing but the Lebesgue measure of T of E, which by the earlier case is determinant of T times Lebesgue measure of E and Lebesgue measure of E is same as the Lebesgue measure of A. So, that proves that the for a for a uh, that proves that for a uh, Lebesgue measurable set, the Lebesgue measure of the transform set T of A is same as le determinant of T times the Lebesgue measure of uh, the set A itself. So, that proves the theorem completely namely. Uh, so, that proves the theorem completely namely that if uh, A uh, if E is any Lebesgue measurable set then T of E is also Lebesgue measurable and the Lebesgue measure of T of E is equal to uh, the determinant of T times the Lebesgue measure of E. So, this is how the uh, this is how uh, the Lebesgue measure um, of a set E in the plane changes with respect to uh, linear transformations. 
we will give some applications of uh, this uh, um, uh, now, because uh, there are many uh, nice linear transformations um, in the plane. So, let us look at the first application of this namely. So, let us take uh, two vectors a and b uh, a 1 b 1 and a 2 b 2 in R 2 and look at the set which are all uh, uh, sets uh, set p of all vectors in the plane of the type where the first component is alpha 1 a 1 plus alpha 2 a 2 and the second component is alpha 1 a 1 plus alpha 2 uh, b 2 where alpha 1 and alpha 2 are numbers between uh, 0 and 1. This uh, is called the parallelogram determined by the vectors uh, a 1 b 1 and a 2 b 2. In the picture, it is the following. So, if we have the uh, plane, let us take two vectors. One vector is this vector and other vector is this. So, this is the vector which is a 1 b, uh, b 1 and this is the vector which is a 2 b 2. Then they determine a parallelogram the geometric uh, object. So, let us see what is that parallelogram. So, that is nothing but this parallelogram. Okay. So, that is the parallelogram p determined by these two vectors a 1 b 1 and a 2 b 2 and um, any uh, vector in between. So, this vector so, this parallelogram p is characterized by that this any vector inside here uh, say so call it as x y. So, p is then x looks like um, alpha 1 a 1 plus alpha 2 a 2 and uh, uh, the second look, looks like alpha 1 b 1 plus alpha 2 b 2, uh, where this uh, alpha and alpha 2 have the property they are numbers between 0 and 1. So, alpha 1, alpha 2 between 0 and 1. So, this is the point, this is the point with components alpha, um, uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2. So, if I take, uh, okay. so this is how, this is what the parallelogram. So, one can uh, check geometric fact that if I take two vectors a 1 and b 1 and look at the geometric uh, uh, picture of this parallelogram. Then, if if I take any alpha 1, alpha 2 between uh, 0 and 1 and look at this, then this is nothing but the parallelogram given by these two vectors. The claim we want to is that we want to show that the Lebesgue measure of this parallelogram is same as the absolute value of a 1 b 1, a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1. So, these are the components a 1 b 1 and a 2 b 2 are the components of uh, uh, the vectors uh, which we started with. So, the claim is, so the claim that Lebesgue measure of p is equal to the absolute value of a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1. Okay. So, to prove this, we are going to show that this p is equal to t of is t of a set E, where t is a linear transformation t linear and E is a nice set. And it is not difficult to guess what is t and what is E. So, let us just look at that. So, the claim. So, let us observe that if t is the matrix with the components a 1, a 2, b 1, b 2. So, rows are the vectors which are given uh, vectors are a 1 b 1 and a 2 b 2. So, the first column is the vector a 1 b 1, second column is the vector components of the vector a 2 b 2. If I look at this transformation t and look at uh, uh, the set E with components alpha 1, alpha 2 in uh, where alpha 1, alpha 2 are real line and uh, they are between 0 and 1. So, what is this set E? This set E is nothing but this set E is nothing but a rectangle uh, actually a square in the plane with sides 0 1 to 0 1. And if I look at T of E, so any set alpha 1 alpha 2. So, what will be uh, this? Uh, uh, so, what we are saying is the following that if I look at the set E, so here is 
here is the set E which looks like so, this is the set E 0 0 this is uh, 1 0 1 1 and uh, 0 1. So, if I look at this set and look at the transformation given by T where T is equal to A 1 B 1 uh, A 1 B 1 and A 2 B 2. If I look at uh, this then the image then the image of this uh, under this is precisely is precisely that uh, parallelogram p where this is a1 and a2 and this is uh, a1 b1 and this is a2 b2 so this transforms to this parallelogram so if t is this and e is this set then T of E is equal to uh, P. That is because uh, what is, so let us look at A 1, A 2, B 1, B 2 and a vector is alpha 1, alpha 2. So, what is that? So, that is A 1, alpha 1 plus A 2, alpha 2 and that is gives you B 1, alpha 1 plus B 2, alpha 2. So, that says the vector here alpha 1 alpha 2 goes to the vector there given by this and that is precisely the parallelogram. So, under the and this is a linear transformation. So, under the linear transformation T given by this matrix the unit square changes to the parallelogram and once that is true. So, this will imply that the Lebesgue measure. So, this will imply the Lebesgue measure of P is same as the Lebesgue measure of in the plane of T of E and that is equal to determinant of T absolute value times Lebesgue measure of E, but Lebesgue measure of E that is a area that is a rectangle. So, it is a area that is equal to 1 and determinant of uh, T is A 1 B 2 minus A 2 B 1. So, that uh, gives us uh, the result. So, that gives us the result that the Lebesgue measure of P is same as the Lebesgue measure of the transform set T of E, which is equal to determinant of T times the Lebesgue measure of E and that uh, uh, Lebesgue measure of E being equal to 1, so that gives us determinant of T which is nothing but A 1 B 2 minus A 2 B 1. So, this gives us that uh, uh, Lebesgue measure of the uh, parallelogram is the determinant uh, of that uh, the given by the vector. So, that is a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1. So, these are this is one of the results that one proves normally in uh, uh, geometry and linear algebra that uh, the determinant uh, is nothing but a measure of uh, the parallelogram area of the parallelogram determined by the vectors. Let us look at another application of uh, this formula. Uh, how the linear transformation changes. So, let us look at uh, the Lebesgue measure of uh, the unit uh, uh, circle area region enclosed by the unit circle. So, Lebesgue measure of all vectors x comma y in R 2 such that uh, x square plus y square is less than 1. So, let us look at that. So, let us call the Lebesgue measure of this to be equal to a number pi. Uh, we are not we are not uh, assuming anything about pi, we are just saying that the Lebesgue measure of this unit circle is a finite quantity. So, let us see why it is finite. So, here is the unit right, it is a bounded. So, this is x square plus y square less than 1. So, that is that set. So, this is a is a bounded set. So, for example, this is enclosed inside this rectangle inside this square of this is 1 and this is 1. So, this is uh, 0 and this is 1 and this is 1. So, it is enclosed inside this square of uh, uh, length uh, 
so that means that the area so this is less than or equal to that uh, it is a subset of the square okay and square is a bounded thing so that means the lebesgue measure of the points say that x square plus y square is less than 1 will be less than or equal to the lebesgue measure in the plane of the square which is finite quantity so that means that the lebesgue measure of the unit region enclosed by the unit circle is a finite number and this finite number we are just calling it by the number by we are denoting it by the symbol pi. So, pi is the uh, uh, Lebesgue measure of the region enclosed by the unit circle. So, then the claim is that if we look at the annulus region, if we look at the annulus region that is x square plus y square bigger than a square and less than b square, then its Lebesgue measure is pi of b square minus a square. So, what we want to prove is that if I look at if I look at uh, here is the bigger circle and here is the smaller one and this radius is A and this radius is B. So, we are saying the Lebesgue measure of this portion okay, is nothing but pi B square minus A square. That is what uh, uh, we should be expecting from our uh, uh, ordinary geometry that we have been learning in schools namely the area of the circle is equal to pi r square. So, we will first prove that the area of a circle of radius r is equal to pi r square and from there we will reduce this fact. So, let us uh, observe that. So, the first thing is let us take uh, the linear transformation t which is diagonal which is given by a 0 0 a. So, we are looking at the diagonal transformation uh, a 0 0 a and look at the unit circle area enclosed by the unit circle. So, that is E. So, E is the set of all x vectors x comma y in R 2 say that x square plus y square is less than 1. Then if we look at any point here and transform it according to this T that will look like. So, let us look at what will that look like. So, let us look at the transformation A 0 0 A and let us look, look at a vector x y. So, that gives us the vector a x a y. So, if this vector had the property that x square plus y square is less than 1, then the ve transformed vector a x a y has the property that a x square plus a y square is equal to a square times x square plus y square. So, which is less than a square. So, that, that shows that the unit circle. So, if E is the unit circle that is x y x square plus y square less than 1, then T of E is the circle the uh, region enclosed by the circle x square plus y square less than a square. So, that is what uh, we know. So, that means, now we apply our uh, uh, apply our theorem of linear transformations. So, look at the Lebesgue measure R 2 of the transformed set E. So, that is equal to by the uh, property of uh, the, the theorem, it is determinant of T times Lebesgue measure of the set E. But determinant of uh, T uh, is equal to uh, it is a, a diagonal transformation. So, that is a square and Lebesgue measure of E which is a unit circle is pi. So, Lebesgue measure of the transform set is equal to pi a square. So, that means the Lebesgue measure of all the points x y say that x square plus y square is less than a square is nothing but pi a square. So, that is the magnification that we are getting. Okay. And so, as a consequence of this let us reduce for the annulus region the area is uh, um, the required Lebesgue measure is pi of b square minus a square. So, let uh, for that we have to just observe that if I look at uh, uh, the circle. So, the set of points x y x y such that x square plus y square is less than b square is a set which is a bounded set and Lebesgue r 2 of that is finite. 
So, instead of finite uh, outer measure, uh, fi finite uh, Lebesgue measure, so uh, I can write that the Lebesgue outer measure of x square plus y square bigger than a square and less than b square is nothing but the Lebesgue measure of the set x square plus y square less than b square set minus the inner circle. So, that is x square plus y square less than a square. And now, everything being finite, I can write this as the Lebesgue measure of the uh, region enclosed by the outer circle. So, that is x square plus y square less than b square minus the Lebesgue measure of x square plus y square of Lebesgue measure of x square plus y square less than a square. So, this is possible because everything is a finite quantity. So, um, the measure of the uh, difference a minus b, uh, measure of a minus b is measure of a minus my measure of b, whenever uh, uh, b is a subset of a and everything is finite. So, that property gives you this and this is pi of b square, just now we saw pi of a square. So, that is pi of b square minus a square. So, that proves. Uh, so, what we are saying is uh, this uh, simple properties uh, help us to uh, confirm that the Lebesgue measure on the plane that we have defined is essentially uh, the extending the notion of area in the plane to a bigger class of subsets and the usual formulas for uh, the areas that we, been, we have been using. Um, a priori without any uh, justifications are now being uh, justified by the Lebesgue measure. I um, will just uh, point out one more uh, uh, extension of this result, uh, namely that the area annual, uh, Lebesgue measure of an annulus region is pi of b square minus a square um, to uh, something uh, in integration, which is uh, looks like uh, the change of variable formula in multiple integrals. Namely, if you have a double integral, uh, then and you change to Cartesian to polar coordinates, then the dx dy. Normally, we have that formula that when you change dx dy, it should be r d r theta d theta. So, a, a more uh, rigorous way of saying that for a particular class of uh, functions, I want to state and give an outline of the proof. We will not be proving it fully. We will give an outline of the proof. So. Let us go to the uh, next uh, application of. Uh, so, this is what I just now said that the Lebesgue measure of the annulus region is Lebesgue measure of the outer circle minus the Lebesgue measure of the inner circle that is pi b square minus a square. So, this is uh, uh, another application or extension of this result just now we proved it is called the integration of the radial functions. So, let us look at uh, if the theorem says let us look at uh, a function defined from 0 infinity on the positive uh, on the non negative part of the real line uh, taking values in uh, uh, non negative values. So, that is 0 to infinity. So, it is a non negative measurable function uh, defined on the non negative part of the real line. Then the claim is that if I look at the double integral integral over r 2 of f absolute value of x, x is a vector. So, absolute value means the norm. So, the magnitude of the vector x. So, look at this. So, this this is like a composite function. The uh, vector x goes to the magnitude that is a non negative real number and f evaluated at that. So, the double integral integral with respect to r 2 is given by 2 pi times f r d r d theta. So, that is uh, uh, the claim that this integral is equal to uh, this integral. So, and what is the meaning of uh, a non negative uh, uh, radial function? F is a non negative, uh, I should have said here it is a radial function, that means it uh, depends only on the absolute value uh, of the function, it does not. Uh, so, f is a non negative. So, this is a radial function. So, this you can think it as f composite the magnitude is the radial function is a radial function it the value of this composite function depends only upon uh, the magnitude of uh, uh, 
the vector and uh, not on the position of the vector. So, to prove such a result, um, the proof is a typical application of simple function technique. So, one tries to prove that for simple uh, measurable functions this is true and then apply monotone convergence theorem and so on. So, I will just outline the steps uh, for a detailed proof the you may consult uh, the textbook. So, let us look at the first step. Let us look at the first step when this function f is the indicator function of a interval a b. When f is the indicator function of a interval a b, where a b is a interval in um, uh, the non negative part of uh, the real line. Uh, so, a less than b bigger than 0. So, when f is uh, the indicator function, let us compute these both sides and what they look like. Okay. So, when we uh, okay. So, when f is the indicator function of the a b, so here is the indicator function. So, this is 0 to infinity. So, 0 to infinity means this will give you uh, indicator function will give you only a to b. So, this will be a to b of uh, the function uh, f r, the in function is indicator function, this value is 1. So, x r d r. So, when you integrate r d r, you get r square by 2 between a and b. So, and so, when you put the values, you get at, um, b square minus a square by 2. So, that is equal to pi um, of b square minus a square. So, this side is nothing but pi of b square minus a square. And what is this uh, f? So, the indicator function of a b evaluated at the absolute value means you are integrating in the annulus region between the limits a and b. So, it is pi b square minus pi a square. So, in that then it is just equal to uh, pi of b square minus a square. So, this both sides are nothing but the result that we did discuss just now that the area of the annulus region is equal to pi b square minus a square. So, step 1 is for indicator function it is that result. The next thing is you look at a sets which are either sequences E n s which are sequences of sets uh, which are Lebesgue measurable of course, either are pairwise disjoint or a increasing sequence and supposing for the indicator function of each set E n this result holds then the claim is it also holds for the union of E n s. Okay. So, if for each E n the result holds then the result uh, for each indicator function of each E n it holds then it also holds for the indicator function of the set E and that essentially uh, is an application of uh, the monotone convergence theorem uh, to the earlier result. So, and then the step 3 is from such things one comes to open sets by the fact that each open set is a countable disjoint union of uh, uh, countable disjoint union of uh, intervals. So, for intervals uh, that property holds. So, this will hold for every open set and from the open sets uh, and uh, null sets. So, one shows the corresponding property also holds for null sets. So, open sets and null sets one goes to the indicator function of any Lebesgue measurable set because any Lebesgue measurable set can be written in terms of open sets and uh, null sets. So, and then from this one applies the usual monotone convergence theorem technique from the indicator function to non negative measurable function. So, these are the steps one follows uh, to uh, prove the theorem of this kind. I just want to conclude today's lecture by saying what we have done it for uh, uh, product spaces of uh, two product spaces can also be extended to any finite number of product spaces. So, namely if you are given a finite number of uh, measure spaces x i a i mu i, we define the product of two of them uh, can be extended uh, by uh, sort of doing one at a time iteratively. You can define uh, the product of the space uh, this x space is x i is 1 to n. You can define the product sigma algebra a i is 1 to n and you can also define the product measure inductively uh, one can do that. And, uh, so, this is called the product space, um, will, I will not go into the details of it, um, but uh, this is useful uh, and one can also show that uh, if you take uh, product of say some finite number m number and take uh, product of some n number of copies and then take the product again that is same as uh, the product of the them put together. So, it is same as the product of 
uh, x i is from n uh, 1 to m plus n. So, these are same. So, one can same uh, I, with usual identity. So, basically it is saying that what we have done it for uh, two product of two measure spaces can be done for a finite number of them. So, as a consequence one can define uh, the notion of Lebesgue measurable subsets in R n and the notion of Lebesgue measure in R n. Um, so, this can be done. So, this again uh, those who are interested should refer the textbook for more details. So, what we have done uh, today uh, is we have completed the study of product measure spaces and with that we have essentially completed what is called the basic concepts in measure theory uh, namely we have done uh, the extension of measure uh, then uh, integration of measure then measure and integration on product spaces. This is the core of the subject and uh, from now onwards I will uh, uh, be looking at some special topics uh, in the, our subject of measure theory. Thank you.